So that's the <coughs> diagram, and you really have four forces. You have the force that is totally known in Cartesian vector form. Then you have a force F1 and magnitude is unknown. Then you have another force F2, exact same thing, magnitude is unknown. Then you have a third force F3 and the magnitude for that is also unknown. So the question here is to determine the magnitudes of the forces F1, F2 and F3 given that at point O you have a condition of equilibrium. That means, I mean those four forces when they are acting at point O there is no movement at the origin. So your resultant FR in this case is going to be the force which is known plus the force vector F1 plus the force vector F2 plus the force vector F3. You take every force and you add those together. And this should basically add up to zero because we know that the forces are in equilibrium. So <coughs> The force F, I mean if I want to write the Cartesian form, you have 9i, 8j, and 5k. I mean that, that's the non force, so there is no problem in writing that force. <coughs> now we need the Cartesian vector form for force F1, force F2, and force F3. So, let's look at each one of them by itself. So, let's say the force F1. Now, if I look at the force F1, we see that we know two angles. We know the angle between the force and its projection on x or y plane. That's one angle. Then we also know the angle between x axis and its projection on x or y plane. So this is the same thing as case two, where you had the force and you had two angles. You had the angle between the force projection and the angle between the force projection and one of the axes. So this is case two. I could break this up like this. This is going to be the Z component. And this we already know is the projection of that force on X or Y plane. So your Z component will be F1 sine 60 and a K. That becomes the Z component. Then we have the FH. I mean, if I call this thing here is FH, then FH will be a known magnitude F1 and cosine 60. Now we're going to resolve FH back into two more components. That means we want to take this point drop a perpendicular on x-axis. So you're looking at this here as the x component. You're looking at this as the y component. So this is f edge. The x component will be this length, which is f edge. This angle is 30. So that's cosine 30. And that times of i. Then you have y component, so you have f h sine 30. And this is your y component, 
So that's negative y. So you need to have a negative sign for that times j. So that's what we get as the first force. Or if I put everything together, then we will have F1 as F1 cosine 60 cosine 30 that's the x component times i <coughs> then you have F1 cosine 60 sine 30 with a negative sign times of j 